My name is David Austin. I think of myself as a painter, though I make many different things. I make drawings and films and watercolors and take photographs. And, but I mainly think of myself as a painter. I know that there are people who sometimes have trouble. They think I'm more than one person because I do these different, different things. But the thing is, I don't really get it because I'm the person who makes them. So to me, um, they all come out of the same um, mind, so to speak. I was born in Harlow, Newtown, as part of the mass exodus from London in the, in the 1960s, where I eventually went to uh, the local art school uh, for my foundation and which was a bit of an eye-opener because I didn't really know that there were living artists. I mean, I knew there were a, a few, but I didn't realize it was this, this, this big world. And I've been working, I guess, as an artist for, gosh, hang on, 1980 to, well, 30 years. Wow, that's really, that's, I'm not sure if that's awful or, yes. Um, we always perceived this show as being like a journey. In fact, the show starts outside the gallery. There's going to be lights hanging up and there's one of my big hanging sculptures. Um, I, think, I think of the lights and the hanging sculptures often like beacons, um, like sanctuary. And so they, that already pulls you in. So you're a bit already like Orpheus, you're being led into the, to the underworld. And then once you're in the show, each space leads into another one. So the journey is, is there. And even when there's a closed off wall, there's a window to look through into the next space or find someone looking at you from that space inwards. All, all my work comes from more than one source and, and usually it's, it's where two, three, four or five things meet. And so when you come to decipher things afterwards, you often have to go back and look at your notebooks and then you realize that, oh, I was reading that then. Um, I was reading that George Sanders, I think that's his name, uh, um, the Bardo book, Lincoln in the Bardo, about Lincoln's son dying and existing in this graveyard in his tomb with all of these other dead people. And it's one of the best books I've ever read about grief and melancholy. And so it would have been the combination of reading, say something like that, and maybe thinking about Cocteau's Orpheus, Orphe, maybe, you know, so it would have been, it would have been a whole bunch of things coinciding. So it's very difficult to untie it afterwards because it's that, it's that, it's that meeting of all these different things that makes something that you hope is going to be more than the sum of its parts. But this is a, you know, fabulously big space. Um, and there, that brings its own problems in a way because it is so large. And some, some, some of my work, you know, there's, there's large pieces and there's films, but there's also watercolors um, which can, or of figures that could, that, could, that could exist in the palm of your hand. So they're very t tiny and very fragile. And, and because of that, we've, we've built a house in, in the middle of the, the large space here. Referred here as David's house, but um, it's actually called something a bit more melancholy. It's, it's the, the room for the drowned. And it contains about 60 watercolors of tiny figures, tiny naked figures, engaged in all sorts of stuff that people do. There's some violent acts, sometimes there's some, there's some sexual acts, there's people with children, there's people peeing, peeing down their legs. There's, and you get the sense that this is almost like a tribe of people, like a, like a a group of people existing together, um, the spawn of Eden, if you like, and and I see them as 
as ghosts, really. I make two kinds of films. Some, some are small, 16 mil. They're, they're, they're really like homemade movies like that you would make on your kitchen table, really, the way they're put together. And then I make other films which are much longer that may have a film crew and actors, and they're very different. But we're showing the short films in this case, and, and, and it's, it, it's, it's like a short film reel of about four films. I've also made some little advert. I think of them as adverts that go, or trailers, really, for forthcoming movies. You know, they're gonna appear in between the other, the other, the other um, films. And there's four films and they're quite abstract. But we've allowed light, there's a window to allow some light um, to come into the space and I felt that was important because it um, it feels then that it's part of the overall structure and spaces of, of the exhibition and I like it that you're just walking into a darker space not through a curtain yeah I, I find gravity somehow thrilling because I, as you mentioned there are parallels between physical gravity and emotional weight and if you pick a baby up and it has that certain weight there's something about that particular weight that the the baby has and the tug on your heart at the same at, at the same time and so they, those parallels are, are fascinating to me I was like my, like a lot of people. I I go flying in my dreams, but for me it's a real struggle. I have to. It's like treading water. I have to really, really work at it. You know, like really kind of, and then I get about an inch off the ground, and it's a terrible struggle. So, at the same time as there's something awfully sweet about gravity, you know, it's about that thing of breaking the breaking the the laws of it. Most of my most of my sculptures are hang are hanging. They don't go. They don't drop on the floor. And and that's a little bit to do with what we were talking about gravity before. I like the feeling of them hanging, you know. But then I like paintings of, you know, Spanish still lives of 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 food hanging from hooks the way it hangs, and you know. So it's you know. Um, I like looking in shop windows of butchers with things hanging, you know, it's, um, it, it obviously appeals to me in, in, in some way. It's something to do with the tension of the wire. <laughs> they're very heavy, but there is it's something to do with the weight, yes, the weight, the pull, the pull, the weight down. It's a very, you know, I don't know why that would even be interesting. Um, and a lot of the mobiles are made that they pack flat into crates so you can take them into, through small doorways and, and hoist them up and then open them up. I also find that thrilling that you can open them up. They are act actually time machines as well. Well, it's a kind of time machine in, in, in that it's, a, it's, 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 it's um, I mean, all art is memory caught isn't it um, but I, I you know I'm much more I think about that um, um, in that my paintings the large paintings for instance can often appear very gra graphic when you see them in publications but when you see them in real life so to speak you can see that they're actually been painted with quite painstaking um, attention to detail but not in a in a, in a kind of little they're, they're actually they're painted with short flat brushes and so each each brush mark feels like it's been impregnated into th into the surface, and so for me each brush mark is like a second of time pushed into the surface. Yeah, the gouaches are meant to pop; they're meant to feel like the radioactive irises, like binging in and out. The title is based on a line from a Pinter um, poem, and. And in, in the poem, you, you, he's talk, like again, he's, he's, doing, he's doing two different things. It's a reference to when he was an actor and he's doing a scene kissing a girl and there's the lens. He, you can see the lens opening, you know, and shut in as the person um, focuses, but you can, there's also the lights and the intensity and then doing this, this 
this thing that's meant to be so personal in front of a you know on a film set as kissing someone so all of that's in like a poem that's only got 10 lines but it's also about sex and love and all these things as well and there's something about there's a violence in there as well the idea of explosions you know um phosphorence flash bulbs they feel like they're like eyes but they again they're very then you look at them and then you realize that they they're collaged um they 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 I've 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 colored paper with gouache and cut the shapes out some of them are very heavy because they've got so much glue in and paper in them and I always really like that um so sometimes the work is not what it first appears well i believe that everything has a contradiction and like most people i'm confused about how 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 on earth you meant to know what anyone else is thinking or feeling and the the difficulty of words like love and because I, i how would i ever know what someone else feels you know we're all we're all in our own spaceships aren't we um and so a lot of the work is about contradiction lightness heaviness air you know water um speed of things the quickness of things slowness of things <laughs>